afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Mary Helen Dellinger, and I'm with the Manassas Museum System. And I'm here today at the Ware Family Cemetery on our Liberia property with one of our fabulous volunteers and partners, Melissa Webb. And you may have seen Melissa at our Facebook Live that we did a few weeks ago on um, stories of preservation and progress on cleaning historic headstones. So we're going to actually be doing that work today. I get to get involved here at the Ware Family Cemetery, and Melissa's going to show us uh, how this actually works. Okay, well, thank you for having me today. And Mary Helen, since you said you're going to get involved, I'm actually going to put you to work. Okay. So you can use gloves if you want. You do not have to. Um, that's entirely up to you. But first, when you come to a historic headstone like this, or even any headstone that may have lichen and dirt on it, you want to take a plastic, not a metal, scraper. I got this at Home Depot um, in the paint department. And just gently, firm but not hard, scrape off the lichen from the stone. So Mary Helen, okay. go for it. All right. How much of this, do you have to get all of it off? No, just do the surface stuff that easily comes off of the headstone. Okay, so if it doesn't all come off, right, you just have to worry. Right, just quickly go all around it. Okay. And um, yeah, like that. Okay. So there's a lot on here. I'm doing the back now. Okay. I think we've all seen headstones that look like this. You can see it off. In Virginia, where okay. headstones are, um, typically the cemeteries have historic headstones which we're very blessed to actually have. The amount of history that is held in our cemeteries today um, is, is vital for families doing their genealogy. So you will see if you're doing work in, um, in the east, eastern, southeastern states of, of America, you'll see a lot of headstones like this, but you'll see them out west too. I'm not saying they don't have them, but if you're in Virginia, you're gonna see a lot like this. So we're gonna quickly go through this. She does, she's better at this than I am, so I'm gonna let her finish it off. Now, just wanna get some of this done and we're good to go. Just the surface stuff. Now, the reason I didn't water this down first is because the morning dew has really wet the stone already. Um, but had this been August like when, and July, like when we did the other cemeteries, um, this the air was dry and this was dry. And I found I was breathing in the pollen and that was not fun. So um, you would want to wet the stone down first before the scraping, but this was already wet. So that's why we did that. But I am gonna wet it again. So you would bring a jug of water. It can be uh, distilled or tap water, it's fine. But you wanna keep the stone wet as you work. Okay, because it's going to activate the D2, which is um, what we are gonna use to clean the headstone. Now, I have already put the D2 formula in this. And um, if you saw the Facebook Live before, you saw what the, the cover looks like. You can get uh, the D2 at um, online. I'll have a link given for the, the uh, cemetery preservation company that sells these, uh, not this bottle, but the bottle of D2. Normally the bottle is about $75 a gallon and this preservation company gives you two gallons for the same price. So if you are planning to go out to do a lot of cemetery work, I suggest buying uh, the in bulk where they send you four for the price of two. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to, you can step back a little bit, we're gonna spray the D2 onto the headstone. Maybe not, okay, there we go. And I like, I liken this under cleaning your bathroom stall, your shower stall. You want to get it covered. Now, I don't do, I don't spray the back of the headstone and I'll tell you why. One, this uh, product is very expensive, but two, when we are scrubbing and cleaning the front, we get a lot of that product on our brush. And that can be used to um, clean the back of the headstone where typically there is not uh, information. Of course, if there is information on the back of the headstone, like you're doing a military headstone or you're doing an obelisk, the obelisks are those um, monuments that are four-sided and sometimes they have family information, a different individual on each side of the headstone. So of course you would clean all of that, top of the, the obelisk down to the base. So what happens now is, if you want to set your timer, sure. 
we're gonna wait three minutes on this. And then we are going to wet our brush. And the brush you want to use is a firm scrub brush. I got this at Home Depot. And you do not ever, 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 can I emphasize this enough, never use metal. Do not use a metal scraper, do not use a metal brush, a metal bristle brush. You will damage the headstone. And that is not the purpose of this. The purpose is to preserve the information on there and not to destroy the stone. But this is firm, but it's not, um, but it's also kind of soft too. It's not gonna be like the metal brush. So you're gonna see in a moment when we're gonna take water and we're gonna pour it while I'm brushing and we're gonna foam up that D2 and we're gonna scrub down and then we're gonna rinse it and you're gonna start seeing it look, come to life. The great thing is, it's not, you're gonna say, oh, it looks great. Maybe it's gonna look dark today because the stone's gonna be wet and we're in the fall and we're in the shade. But as time goes by, every time it rains, that D2 is going to reactivate and it's gonna keep lightening the stone. Okay, so um, since we're still waiting for a little bit, I wanna mention that when I clean the cemeteries, I only use the D2 on cleaning headstones that have information. If you'll notice here, we have a footstone at um, you know several feet from the headstone. Yes, that is also a marker, but it's not a marker we're trying to pull information from. If I have time, I will scrub with what's left over on my brush, the footstone. Now, an exception to the rule is, let's say this headstone was missing in a cemetery, in this cemetery, but he had on his footstone his initials. We would know, be able to look at documentation and see those initials, look back and see who possibly had those initials that would be buried here. And then we could narrow it down possibly to this individual and either create a headstone and replace it or make a paper headstone with the documentation on it, place it where the headstone would have been, take a picture with um, billion graves and upload it so we now have a GPS location of where that individual is buried. But we should be close to our timer. One minute. One minute left, okay. So let me tell you a little bit about what we did this summer. Uh, this summer, myself and a um, couple members of the Daughters of the American Revolution and many members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from the Centerville Stake went in and we cleaned the entire Manassas City Cemetery, which was well over a thousand headstones. Uh, I think um, we cleaned over 800 of the 1100 headstones that were there. We also cleaned a few weeks ago, the Rose Hill City Cemetery, the Rose Hill Cemetery in Manassas City. And that cemetery is also historic and often forgotten. And uh, we clean that entire cemetery and the, the graves date back into the 1800s there as well. So over a thousand headstones were cleaned uh, over this summer. And um, you should take a moment if you're local to drive through those cemeteries, it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to um, start working on this headstone. What I'm gonna do is, as anything, you start from the top to the bottom. So I am gonna start scrubbing and see how dirty that is. And that extra light chin that we couldn't get off with the scraper it has now come off. Woo, sorry, sir. And I've gotta, I'm sorry, I'm right-handed, so I gotta go this way. So we're wetting the stone. Remember to keep it wet. You'll notice I'm putting my hand on the on the headstone. The reason I'm doing this is this this headstone, it's firm, it's steady in there. Um, fortunately, it can support me. But um, oftentimes you're gonna go in and they're gonna be wobbly. And if you're cleaning a headstone, you don't wanna damage it by knocking it over or falling when it falls over. So get a firm grasp of the headstone to make sure you're keeping it in place. Starting to see it coming out? Yes, that's amazing. So you can see this is starting to come to life. Now, 
you might say, but what about this black stuff up here and inside the lettering? I'm glad you asked. So um, I'm gonna take a minute. I wanna spray a little extra on here and, and explain something to you while it activates. Okay. Can you set your timer for two minutes, please? Okay. Some headstones are harder to clean than others. These are, t this blackened stuff up here are typically presents from birds. When they eat the berries and they don't settle in their tummy, the headstone gets the, to be the deposit place for them. And so sometimes that's not gonna come off. Over time it might, it'll fade a little bit, but uh, don't worry that you're like, wait a minute, I can't get this black stuff off, this dark purple. Um, you're not gonna get that off right now. So that, that's in there for quite some time. Over time, you should be able to. Some headstones are gonna need a little extra assistance than um, just the one spraying and waiting and going back. I see some, if you'll pan over to some of these older or smaller headstones, uh, like this small one here of, uh, is it Johnny? Um, he, uh, his headstone will be a really quick one. That would be wet it, spray it, wait three to five minutes, rinse it, scrub it, move on. The average headstone would just take maybe a total of 15 minutes for you, maybe 10 to clean. But this one has been under this tree, um, the elements of life, the tree, the birds, and then whenever there's been mowing, dirt has kicked up and it's, it's embedded there. Now, as far as going inside these letters, my brush was going over them superficially. I can take them and kind of narrow in, but you want to bring with you a wooden pick. You can get those, at like the when you do shish kebab, they're wooden ones you can get at the grocery store. And then you can just go in and work the lettering out of the, um, the dirt out of the lettering. So while that's activating, I'm gonna work on the side a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna let you take this scrub brush, get a little closer to the stone. And I'm gonna pour water while she's doing this so it'll help foam up that um, D2. I'm not rinsing off the D2, I'm activating it so that she can scrub and, um, and get it clean. So is there a circle motion back and forth that you recommend? Whatever, whatever works. Okay. Works for you. But just make sure you get it all over. And like I said, it's just kind of like cleaning a bathtub or a shower. Okay. Look at that. You, you couldn't read that. that 10 minutes ago. Correct. Okay. Take a, um, a pick and start working through this, uh, a wooden pick. Um, and then just, there's really not much more we can do at this time. Because like I said, this is embedded into the stone and we want to give the D2 time to activate and work itself out. So uh, you might want to come by in a day or even this afternoon and take another picture and then come by next week and take another one and do the comparison. Uh, we did a before picture. You're seeing it live here now. Uh, easier, a little easier headstone. It's in the sunlight and you'll see that there is um, some light shin on here and It's a little wet from the dew, but not as wet as before. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet the stone. Okay. And please, when you go into the cemeteries and you're bringing in things like this, take your jugs, your empty jugs, and their caps back with you. I always say leave the cemetery better than you found it. See, I'm not digging into it. I'm just lightly going over it. I'm not being delicate either. It's firm, but not hard. Okay. Wet it one more time. All right. And I'm gonna spray it down. Okay, and now we wait. See how it foams up? Harder. Pour some water on it so we can see the difference. Get down to the lower part. I 
Okay. Yeah, so you can kind of see where I need to do more. Yeah. So you'll see that it's modeled a little bit, and that's just, again, um, berry stain and um, nature stain. And so we will spray this again and work it over a couple times. But um, you are starting to see how it's, it's coming to light. And before it was gray, because it had the lichen over it and gave it a gray appearance. But we don't want, you know, you want to keep it, the stone looking nice. And once we have this one cleaner, and, and like I said, we should come back later and take a photograph of it in about an hour when the stone dries. And then in a couple days, and just compare the difference as that um, D2 works through it. Now, there is no writing down at the bottom here. Um, I like to have the whole stone looking really good, but if you're really limited, please at least make sure from just below the writing up looks fabulous because that's where you've got your documentation. And what's really great is when we clean these headstones, we've preserved the history of the stone, the history of the individual who's buried here. There are descendants, hundreds or thousands of descendants of each of these individuals here, unless they died as a child or didn't have children, but they still had relatives. And when this information is preserved, it's not just to look at when you're walking by the cemetery. We need to make sure it's documented. We need to make sure that it's made available for people doing their ancestry to be able to find it. So um, I am a volunteer with Billion Graves. And what we do is we are a grassroots organization, goes throughout the world, and we take photos of each headstone and it, they are all individually GPS marked. Once uploaded, they're in the free website that um, is then, the images are then transcribed and we are partners with the world's largest genealogy company, uh, Family Search. So if I cleaned this headstone for the wares and I took a photograph with Billion Graves, not only is it GPS marked with an image that anybody can come onto the site, not only see the picture of the headstone, not only know the location, but they could be driven to the location and walked right up to it. If there are descendants of the wares on Family Search uh, who have started in putting their ancestry, and this information, um, this individual is there, this is automatically uploaded once the photograph is taken to Family Search. It's automatically a source for people doing their family history. So you are, um, imagine, imagine that if you're a descendant who lives in Germany because your family traveled with the military and that's where you ended up and you wanted to see your ancestor in, uh, at this location, but you can't make it, but now you can see where they are. And if you were living in Kentucky and you wanted to come up and see, uh, the uh, website would actually, and the app would actually drive you up and walk you to the headstone. So the preservation of the, it's not just so that you can look at it and see it and say, hey, that's really pretty, but it's, it's historic documentation. These people had lives, these people had families, these people were our neighbors, they were our ancestors' neighbors, and, or maybe they were our ancestors. So we want to keep that in mind when we go into cemeteries and clean and do preservation that um, we're doing a service for many, many people, those who have gone before and those who are, who are looking.